Hello everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Vision. It has been absolutely ages since I've made a video and yes, I'm finally making another video and today we are going to be uh, visiting Bop and the really amazing Easter egg they added uh, to it um, to KSP2 and um, <clears throat> uh, this Easter egg was originally in KSP1 um, but uh, they've made some massive improvements to it um, which are really cool and uh and it's a ton bigger and i'm sure most of you will probably know uh it is the a dead kraken on bop and it is just so much more improved than the one on ksp1 um so uh we're going to be visiting that today and um yeah so uh, some lots of you uh may know uh, i actually haven't been making any videos for months now probably and um <laughs> it's i we've had so many fun ideas to do in ksp2 and I kept on doing things, um, all different, uh, video, I just kept on trying and trying and trying, but all those stupid bugs in KSP2 just been so annoying, and I basically kind of lost interest in it, and then I noticed that one of my, um, videos, a mod review in KSP1, was seemed to get a lot of views, and then I tried making some videos with that, and it just really ended up really terrible, so I've kind of just lost all motivation for KSP2, but, um, Luckily, I got some motivation back, and um, I uh, decided to do the mission of visiting Bob. So hopefully, we'll have more KSP2 videos from me coming out soon. Um, I really do hope so because I do actually want to do them. It's just you lose the enthusiasm with all the bugs and things. It, I mean, <coughs> KSP2 it's a lot better than when it first started, but yeah. Anyway, every person that's played KSP2 probably knows the kind of pain I feel. Anyway, uh, I should probably get back to the build time lapse. Here we are uh, constructing the build. I constructed the lander and, uh, and plenty of definitely overboard fuel amount, but it kind of came in handy because I didn't have a particularly um, <clears throat> good takeoff or landing for that matter either. I couldn't quite find where the Easter egg was located. Um, but yeah. So, uh, also, by the way, what did you think of that uh, little start intro? I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I worked on it for quite a while. Um, anyway, <clears throat> here we are, and, um, yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether I should keep on making KSP2 videos. I feel like I do want to. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's so buggy. But, um, anyway, if you, uh, actually were looking at the video, you may have noticed just then I made a little mistake with one of the fuel lines. Um, so, uh, one of the fuel tanks, um, didn't quite empty properly. But uh, anyway, that comes in the future, and we are just about done constructing. Uh, but we need to put some solar panels on it just to make sure we can um, continue our power. And I decided to get the huge, huge ones. And uh, yeah, so um, I can't believe um, that I actually, on the first try, this was actually the first try of this mission, I managed to get all the Delta V and all the fuel and everything right. I seriously thought I was going to have like two or three tries trying to get. Um, all of that right but uh, anyway here we are putting the fairing on and let us get to the launch And as you can see, launch was successful as we break through the cloud layer and begin doing our gravity turn and work our way up into orbit with those three mammoth, I mean, sorry, five mammoth engines uh, propelling us up into space, very powerful engines. And also you may notice a good little heat um, warning up there. Uh, there's a little issue with KSB2. Um, I'm pretty sure the, there's a bug report that the fairings are supposed to um, uh, give more uh, protection from heat to all the other parts, so uh, I hope that it is acceptable that I did actually turn on um, what's it called, uh, the thing where you um, stop all heat damage um, so like none, none, no parts there are going to explode. Anyway, I hope that's acceptable because it is technically a bug, it wasn't one of the bug uh, things. Anyway, 
Yeah, so now we've got a very messy detachment of the boosters, and here we are deploying the fairing, and we can have a beautiful look over our craft. They're very, very nice looking, and uh, yeah, so now we need to uh, get our orbit around Kerbin Circular, and uh, we will begin that in just a moment after deploying the solar panels. And we will begin burn now. Wow, I can't believe I timed that, timed that right. <laughs> anyway, um, what do you think? I, I um, designed this video very much so, including the music and cinematics and everything, to be a music video. And I do feel like my um, commentary kind of ruins that. So um, tell me, you think this design, if I was to cut out my um, uh, commentary, whether I should actually uh, upload this to YouTube as a music video, because I think it would be really cool, like a really good cinematic. Anyway, you can tell me that in the comments and give me a little help with the algorithm. Speaking about the algorithm, um, if you do feel like I deserve it um, for making videos like this and making more future videos like this, hopefully, um, I hope that you will help uh, boost me through uh, the YouTube, through YouTube, and uh, give me a subscribe and like, and uh, yeah. So uh, enough of that. Here we are arriving at Jewel, detaching those extra fuel boosters, uh, not fuel boosters, fuel boosters, um, fuel tanks, and there we are on detach. And now we've got to wait till we can actually get in, um, get a. Uh, oh goodness, it's been so long since I've done a commentary. I can't remember what they're called. Anyway. We need to get ourselves on a course to get into Bob's Sphere of Influence. And here we are, just time warping in. And now we've got beautiful Bob just right below us. Very, very nice view. And now I guess it's time to prepare to undock the lander and go down to the surface. By the way, I did do a bit of off-screen time warping to get everything at the right uh, spot. Anyway, let's board our Kerbals into the lander, as it is kind of unrealistic to transfer them through fuel tanks. I thought I'd do it the realistic way and EVA them. I mean, I guess they probably wouldn't EVA in real life either to uh, just move some people between them, but uh, oh well, we can still do it our way. We're in a game after all. So now let's begin uh, pointing retrograde and burning retrograde and um, I'm not actually going to show you where the thing is. I mean, I'm sure you can probably tell by the video. I mean, you might be able to figure it out, but uh, check out Matt Lowen's video if you want to figure out where its location is, um, as I didn't quite get time in the video to show you where it is located. But as we can see, there is the huge dead kraken at, on the surface. So uh, let's start aiming to land near that. And by the way, this did take me a attempt or two, but uh, actually no F, uh, F5s and F9s, so that was good. So here we are having touchdown right in the middle of the Kraken's tentacles. And oh, what's going on here? Now the recording seems to be glitching out a bit. There must be something very interesting about the Kraken that gives its its powers to destroy ships. And obviously it must be in its bones because I mean, where that's all that's really left here. And oh, what's going on here? And oh dear oh dear, what is going on? Oh, oh dear, and the screen's completely glitching. Oh dear. And for anyone who somehow couldn't figure that out, this is all just um after effects. Oh things I've added in afterwards. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, there's definitely something radioactive or something around here that's causing the screen to go all glitchy like this. Anyway, we will get out of there before it does too much harm to Jeb. Uh, I don't know, it might be Tim C. I cannot remember. I, I'm not very good at keeping track of my Kerbals, but uh, it's either Jeb or Tim because those are the two I put in the can. Anyway, uh, they just, he decided to uh, come back to the spikes on the Kraken. Maybe not the best idea, because uh, the screen and everything's glitching out badly again. Uh, and honestly, Jeb should probably get out of here before he finds out what kind of effects the, um, 
whatever is causing the screen to go like this, it uh, might cause some issues to the lander or their suits. But uh, nevertheless, let's plant a flag and start boarding the Kerbals back onto the ship to get ready to get back to the mother ship and return home to Kevin as I'm sure their families are missing them. Anyway, let's uh, board our Kerbal here. I'm pretty sure that was Jeb. Uh, or oh, that's Jeb. I'm, I, I, I'm not sure. No, that's Jeb because TMC's got the little hair um, kind of sticking out. Anyway, let's begin lift off to get a uh, get um, our orbit line intersecting with the uh, mothership. And uh, as you can see, I didn't do a particularly good job, but uh, we got so much fuel, I wasn't too concerned about it. And we got a beautiful sunrise there, and with Jewel in the background. Anyway, let's start getting um, our line, orbital line, uh, in the correct spot. And we've also got our docking UI on. Um, it is just the game UI, but I thought I should add some kind of a reason for putting it on. <laughs> anyway. Also, tell me what do you think of this style? Um, uh, it's I'm kind of copying Marvin's uh, idea of um, cinematic. I, I think it's actually really good. Um, anyway, tell me if you, I sh um, what you think of the style and whether I should continue with it, or whether you do prefer uh, kind of me kind of showing how I, how everything is done. But I mean, I'm not the most pro person, so but because I wouldn't be the best advice, wouldn't give the best advice. But uh, anyway, I'm, I, I wouldn't mind knowing. Anyway, let's start getting ready to correct our orbit to uh, properly intersect the other mothership. And there we go, and let's point uh, retrograde uh, away from our target. And begin getting ready to slow down, and here we are. Slowing down, and yeah. Anyway, I might shut up for this next part. And we have successfully docked. Um, sorry, I didn't want to talk too much then, as I did want to distract the Kerbals, as this is a very stressful time getting all of our systems docked. So uh, let's start time warping till we can get to a uh, optimal uh, transfer window to exit uh, Bob's sphere of influence and get into an orbit around Jewel. Let's just time warp away from Bob. Uh, see you later and your weird Kraken. Anyway, let's start getting ready to begin our burn to get back to Kerbin. And here we are, just showing our orbital line over the top, and there we go. Our burn is complete, and now let's begin time warping for the years and years taking to get home. And let's do a small mid-course correction burn, just to make sure we uh, get all, uh, all the orbits correct. Now, time to begin uh, deceleration as we uh, are not going to enter the atmosphere immediately as it would be very, very rough for the poor Kerbal. So we are just going to, since we've only got so much fuel left, we're just going to get into a uh, pretty high orbit around Kerbin. And then we will uh, just from there uh, bring our orbit into the atmosphere of Kerbin. And then using the remainder of the fuel, we will slow down a little bit. Then we will detach the command pod when that happens, as well as retracting the solar array. And let's get ready. And detach. So, Kerbals, it's time to brace, put your seatbelts on, and uh, get ready for the re-entry. Oh, and it looks like we've had a small malfunction in the command pod as the lights have just, just turned off. Oh, okay, they're back on again. Must have been something weird happening. Anyway, 
So uh, I thought I'd use the arsenic just to make it kind of look a little bit more dramatic coming through the atmosphere. Um, so yes, let's just slowly time warp down to the ocean. The drag parachutes have deployed and now the main chutes have deployed and now we are going at 300 meters, uh, 200 meters, 100 meters and we have splashed down. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe to help me through my journey on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please tell me in the comments or the style of video. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next Case B1 or Case B2 video, depending on what it is. See you next time.